Um, it's really these guys and, and others like these architects that really make this culture what it is. So without further ado, I do want to bring these guys out. This is going to be the art of collaboration. These guys have all done projects that would fill a fucking telephone book you know, of items, and we're going to bring them out and let them educate us on what's going on. So everybody give a very, very loud applause. Errolson Hugh, acronym, John Elliott, Matthew Williams, Alix, Hiroshi Fujiwara, Fragment, and Nigel Sylvester. First up, Hiroshi Fujiwara, Nigel Sylvester, John Elliott, Errolson Hugh, just grab it, this one. Matthew Williams, Alix, have a seat, sir. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit. I think one of the other things that I wanted to preface was that the way this room is set up was deliberate. I think usually when you've come to a talk, you'll see like people up on a stage, elevated, 100 feet away from you. What we have here is we wanted to recreate like an office conference room setting. All right, so we are sitting at the conference tables. You guys are the attendees to our meeting, and we're just having a chit-chat, and you guys get to ask questions at the end, all right? So that's how we're going to do this. So, art of collaboration. Thanks for, thanks for coming out, everybody. Yeah, so these are mics. You have to you? use these. <laughs> We're low budget here. We don't have the Janet Jackson headset. Um, <laughs> all right, so let's start with a very, very quick, uh, brief introduction on what you guys do, and we'll just go around the table before we get into the conversation. You want to start, Hiroshi? Oh. <laughs> yeah, you, you start. Excuse me? <laughs> yeah, start with a quick introduction. Uh, what do you mean? Of yourself. My name is Hiroshi Fujiwara. I'm here for talk about the art of collaboration, which... I don't know, maybe I've been doing like 30 years. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah, take right. up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, my name is Nigel Sylvester, professional bike rider, and I'm here to talk about the art of collaboration. So thanks for having me, Hype Beast. Cool. John Elliott, uh, here from Los Angeles, make clothes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Errolson Yu from Acronym, from Berlin here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Matt Williams from Alix. All right. So uh, let's start with you, Matt. Um, you are one of the one of the newest members to be like doing a big collaboration with a big company. Um, talk about some of your experiences prior, because maybe like you're like one of the freshest faces. Um, there was a time where you weren't getting the collaboration, and when you were trying to get the collaboration. So bring us back to that moment when you were. When you were trying to get it and like trying to get the attention of these brands, what was it like back then? Because I think a lot of young people here are wondering, they might have a brand, they might have a startup, and their dream one day would be to collaborate with a big brand. How do you go about that? Is there a secret recipe? Yeah. Um, yeah, there yeah, there is? Oh, yeah, there shit. Is. <laughs> no. Usually I use yeah as a filler word. I'm trying to work on that. <laughs> um, y you know, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to go back and, and think because... You know, I started making clothes 13 years ago, you know, in L.A., just in the in the garment district. And the fashion industry was so different when I started. And uh, collaborations really weren't a thing when mm -hmm. I originally started making clothes. And you also didn't know what a designer looked like. You were yeah. just judged by <laughs> the, the clothes and yeah. the designs in the store. And, um, you know, I can't really remember <clears throat> ever actively you know seeking a collaboration like that mm -hmm. it's normally happened more naturally you know through my circle of friends um through people being attracted to the work that i was doing yeah and then the non-collaborative you know, work you were doing yeah, yeah yeah but i think you know uh, one thing about clothing is it's not really about the individual designer. All designs are a collaboration. It's a collaboration with the fabric supplier, the factory, the, the stores, the photographer showing your image. So collab collaboration is a part of making clothing, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, you know, many brands reach out to do collaborations, but they're not always like an authentic fit. And, and that was always for me. I just, you know, waited until it was a brand that felt that I had a personal connection to or with the brand I was collaborating with, they could make a product that I couldn't make on my own with my factories, or they could improve upon the product that I made already. <clears throat> and I think that's a really important thing 
at least in my opinion of what collaboration should be, is it shouldn't just be a collaboration just to, to make more stuff, but how can you prove, improve on an existing design? How can these two worlds coming together make the product better? And so, so that that's always been the viewpoint that I've, I've gone into it from, yeah. So is it safe to assume that there were collaboration opportunities that came to your table early that you had to deliberately like reject? Yeah. Okay, that's, that must be hard to do, especially if you're like a young designer trying to come up, right? Well, well now, you know, I think sometimes brands, I mean, it, it's a two-way street. It's not always like me benefit, benefiting from the brand collaboration. Sometimes the brand benefits much more yeah. from, from uh, the relationship that maybe somebody has to the, to the kids or to, Absolutely. to whoever or to whatever they're trying to do. Right. So um, it's not like, like I'm cool with doing collaborations when it feels really right, but it's not, it's not something that, um, you know, I, I put, I don't like push to do it. Yeah. If it's not, doesn't feel right. Right. Yeah. Errolson, do you remember the days before you had amazing collaborative projects coming out? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think maybe we started a little bit differently with Acronym because um, we actually started as an agency, so we didn't have our own brand at the beginning. We were a contract design gun for hire, basically. So um, we did a lot of technical things, so we could be you know, downhill mountain biking, snowboarding, whatever. Um, at the very beginning when we started out, we were just kids out of design school and we we're like, you know what? You want to pay me to design something? I don't care what it is. <laughs> like, I don't care what you need or if it's good, I just show me the money. That's yeah. it. You know, wh what's the deadline? When can I do it? And then as we progressed, we were like, okay, we're good at this, we're good at that. We don't believe in this. We started to filter out. And then at some point we were like frustrated because we couldn't do what we wanted to do. And we were presenting our clients things. We're like, um, we think this is a good idea. And they were like, nah, this is too difficult. We don't want to deal with it. We just want to make, you know, 15%, you know, plus on sales this season. Right. And, uh, and then we started Acronym out of that reason. Um, <clears throat> what year was this? It's like we founded the company officially in like 1999. And then the first product came out 2002. So we had like a three year R&D phase. Mm. And um, and then we didn't do a collaboration in the sense, I think, that we're talking about it today until, God, I don't know, maybe 10 years after that. Right. Yeah, so so we you just had said, the acronym brand for like a decade before a real collaboration like that we think of came yeah, out. Yeah, and we had a lot of, I mean, we had offers all the time. We just always said no because we just, we didn't care. <laughs> we, were <just> like, <laughs> we, were just, we were just too busy focusing in on our thing. Uh -huh. And... Um, and because we had spent the time working with a lot of other companies before, we were sort of like, you know, we got burned so many times. We were like, I don't really want to listen to the regional sales manager's, you know, justification for why we should do this color or not do this this style or whatever. No disrespect to regional sales managers sorry, who might be yeah, in the audience. Sorry, <laughs> from, from, the designers, from the designer's perspective, I think if you're actually doing, you know, the work and you, and you respect the design process and... and as a, as a holistic thing, like thinking about like, I'm not just gonna make this thing, but I'm gonna make something that benefits somebody. If you follow that, then I don't think you really necessarily, it's not always the best method to follow um, sales metrics. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Because sometimes you have to educate the consumer, it takes time, right? It right. Takes, and, um, yeah. and so the same thing was with collaborations and then what, you know, what Matthew said about um, having the authentic fit, that's 100% correct because you know, in our case, we were always smaller, and still are. We're still very small versus the companies we're collaborating with. So if you're not super clear about what you want to do, and even more importantly, what you don't want to do, mm -hmm. you can just get absorbed and, like, sort of swept along in the momentum. Yeah. So uh, we didn't really feel comfortable collaborating with anybody for ages because we were just so busy trying to get good at uh -huh. what we do. And uh, in the end, that gave us a lot of power because um, we had autonomy, and we weren't afraid to say no. And being able to say no was like a huge bargaining chip. We're just like, yeah, yeah we don't need to do this. Right. So, Were you in yeah. the same position as him where there wasn't ever like a call up a 
brand hotline and ask for a collab? Like it was more organic relationship built? Um, yeah, I, was, I would say like, I mean, obviously the biggest one we've done and the one that put us on the map for a lot of people is Nike. Yeah. Um, but I knew Fraser, who's you know, the guy for all of the stuff at Nike, before he worked at Nike. So oh, okay, yeah. he was one of the first people to buy acronym back in like mm -hmm. 2002 yeah. uh, for the, um, what was then called the hideout. I can't believe he just outed Fraser like <laughs> these kids are like Fraser and Nike. That's who I have to talk to. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But um, um, and you know, and then I met um, in Japan. I met Mark Parker uh -huh. like 2003, something like that, with on the Bear Brick tour. And uh, but we didn't actually start working together until 2013. Yeah. So it was super organic. Well, super we just, organic. We just yeah. knew each other and. Everybody knew what everybody else was about. Right, right. And Fraser called was like, you know, we should probably finally do something. Like, uh -huh. here's this project we think could fit for you. Yeah. And um, that's right. what happened. So, right, right. Yeah. And I think a lot of young designers might make the mistake of, like, when they meet a key person and then they don't, like, immediately get, like, that invitation. Sure. They're like, man, fuck, like, fuck him, you know? And then, like, <clears throat> they almost burn the bridge in, in essence. But, like, I think it takes a lot of patience like, I mean, you said it took like years from the first introduction to the actual, let's sit down and do something. You know, you didn't, you just did your thing. You didn't like take it personally or anything. No, not at all. I mean, we didn't even, it's also a different age. So now I think you can legitimately build a brand on collaborations probably, you mm -hmm. know, but um, because of what we do and the way we do it, we were just mainly focused on the craft for lack of a better word. Yeah, yeah. And it's what we were trying to do is so hard Mm -hmm. But it just took all of our attention, and we just didn't have the bandwidth even to like right. to talk about it. And I think the people um, that we now collaborate with, they responded to the effort that we put in. Mm -hmm. And so by the time we actually did get good at it, they were like, "Oh no, we want you for who you are. Yeah, like we want you to do your thing with us. Yeah, and that's I think what makes a good collaboration is when two people who are good at doing what they do do some new thing that they couldn't do without each other. Right. right? Cool. So. John, how, how old is the brand? The brand is now six years old. Okay. It's almost seven. All right. And then from a collaboration standpoint, when was like, in your mind, the first big project that you embarked on? It was Nike. Um, that was our first real collaboration. And similar to Matt and Errolson, we were basically saying no up until that point, mm -hmm. um, just because as a child, I, I literally were, was, sketching sneakers and sending them to Nike and that was kind of the North Star. <laughs> so um, I knew that I didn't want to affect the opportunity to work with Nike uh -huh. up until um, it was official. And we, we had the chance to uh, actually collaborate on Nike IDs um, for uh, a fall winter 2014 runway show, so early on. Yeah. And that was kind of like when the door opened. And then from there, um, I think it's really important to be selective and to really only use collaborations as an opportunity to um, either tell a story or work on product that you wouldn't be have the opportunity opportunity to create yourself with your own manufacturing base. Mm -hmm. Your collaboration with Nike, which just came out like within the past year, what would you say? Right? Like when did it? The first one come out publicly. Yeah, so we did the Nike Vandal, um, which was like the first official collaboration, uh -huh. and that was uh, last spring, back in like uh, like May of last year. Yeah. And then since then, we've done the Air Force One, and then most recently uh, the LeBron Icon, um, which came out in August. Yeah. So you take yourself back to the time where you're like sketching shoes and submitting them to Nike, and then we want you to now work on a shoe with this guy we have named LeBron. How's that, how's that feel? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's, it's unfathomable. It's uh, such an honor. It's like one of those things that you treat with such respect. And to be honest, it took us a long time to get to the final product. Mm -hmm. um, just because we wanted to do, I wanted to do something new. I wanted to do right by LeBron. I wanted to make sure that there was LeBron DNA. Um, and we also wanted to make sure that it, it told a story and would have legs to, uh, to continue. So, you know, it was one of those things where he was a, a fan of the brand and um, we had the opportunity to do both apparel and uh, footwear. And I think 
the thing about working with Nike is it's, you know, it's kind of like the first time you step on campus and I'm sure everyone here can relate. It's, it's like, uh, you go to Oz or you go yeah. to like Willy Wonka, <laughs> the chocolate <laughs> factory for me, at least, you know, they, you get to kind of go through some of their DNA and, and it, for me, it was like, um, it just touched on so many little points in my childhood. And, you know, for me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm extremely dyslexic. So when I was a kid, um, growing up in San Francisco, skateboarding, like I really only wanted to be able to get clothes for free, eat for free, and basically like control my own destiny. And that was all I've ever been ra like razor focused on. And so to be on campus at Nike, it was like uh, really a dream come true. And was LeBron actively involved? Yeah, oh yes, absolutely. Um, he, he is very opinionated and you know he wanted to see something new. In fact, we were in a meeting um, with a bunch of Nike executives and uh, his team and they presented what they wanted the project to be. And um, basically when they were done presenting, he kind of pulled me aside and was like, fuck that, like tear it down, create something brand new. Wow. And um, <laughs> I was like, Whoa! <laughs> like, like, who do I wow. listen to? Yeah, like I mean, what 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 should I do? And obviously, um, you listen to you listen to the king. Yeah, that's exactly. Nigel, so you come from a different perspective because you are an athlete first. Yeah. Right. And I think traditionally, back in the day, like to John's time of what he was talking about, like when we grew up, we idolized the athletes, and in doing that, we tried to capture any portion of what they possessed which was usually the footwear and that's how a lot of sneakerheads got into sneaker culture in the first place right so you are on like we're just measly designers you're actually out there on the battlefield you know and i think for an athlete a traditional athlete i'll say basketball football baseball it's like the dream to get a shoe deal but you have a very unique position on athleticism especially as it pertains to nike so i want you to share some of that too like of how you are a action sports, extreme sports athlete that doesn't do the X Games and doesn't do the typical competition stuff. You just go on your own route. So tell them a little bit about that differentiation. No, nah, for sure. So I've um, been riding bikes my entire life, you know, and you speak about collaboration and I think you touched on it where it's like it's more than just brand to brand. It's like the photographer, it's the, it's the, the fabric, all the different things. So for me, like collaboration started very early, like when I started to film, actually like put my tricks on camera. Yeah. And like one of my boys, the whole like little like VHS, like VHS tape camera, or whatever uh -huh. the case is, and we're out at the park riding a bench or whatever the case may be. Right. And that was the first time where it's like, cool, but I need to go and do my trick, but also you need to capture this the right way. Uh -huh. And then we'll sit down and edit that footage together and just put it on a DVD. Yeah. <laughs> and I would give it out to my family members. <laughs> like, <laughs> check it out. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, so, like, that was, like, pretty cool, right. you know? Um, and then growing up, embracing a brand like Nike, like, it was, it was there. It was, you know, it was, it was such a, it was, it was a brand that, every, for all my friends, my family members, we had it in the household. It was, like, cool. You had to get your kicks. You had, yeah. You know, like, your, your uh, wind runner, like, whatever the case may mm -hmm. be, like, whether it's back to school shopping or Christmas shopping, it was there. Right. It was, like, all the amazing athletes that I looked up to as a kid, a lot of them were Nike yeah. athletes. How long you was know? it into your career that you finally signed a deal with Nike? Not the collab, but like just a signed that. Yeah. yeah, man. So for me, um, I had just turned 18 years old wow. and I went professional. I got uh -huh. signed to a Nike and I got signed to Dave Mirra's company at the same exact time. Wow. And for, the, I'm, for the, those of you who don't know who Dave Mirra is, like Dave Mirra is like the Michael Jordan of BMX, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, he's the greatest ever. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so, it, and so I, as, as a kid, I grew up watching him and idolizing him, watching him on TV and stuff. So for him to give me that opportunity was truly incredible. Right. And then at the same exact time, like getting signed to Nike. What age was it again, you said? I was 18. 18. Yeah, I was and If you don't mind, how old are you now? <laughs> I'm 31. Okay. Yeah, man. So I've been with the brand for a third of my life. Wow, yeah, shit. Yeah, it's been crazy, man. That's crazy. And like, so when you signed with Nike when you're 18, you're probably like, all right, when do I get a shoe? <laughs> yeah, of course. It was like, how long is it going to take? <laughs> and, it, and for me, it was wild too, man, because I was riding for another shoe brand, and it wasn't, it was an unofficial type of official thing. Uh -huh. And I, like, I remember, like, having holes in my shoes, dude. Like, yeah. So, like, getting signed to Nike and getting that first box and it had, like, 12 pairs of shoes in there. I was like, wow, this is incredible. Like, right, right. 
one of the best feelings ever. All right, know? so your, your Nike slash Jordan just dropped, and we're going to yeah. get into that in a second. Well, for, I want to get to Hiroshi first now. So, Hiroshi, do you, as a sort of like the, 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 the triple OG of this entire shit, um, <laughs> do you remember when there was like you didn't do a collaboration yet, like, and you were trying to get something going? Like, what did collaboration mean to you back in the day? I think the first one I did was like maybe 30 years ago when I started Good Enough. I think it was 1988. Uh huh. And then I wanted to make a bag. But, you know, you can do it. You can make a bag. You just travel to China and make it. Yeah. But <laughs> I just wanted to ask Porter, the company Porter. Right. Porter is like the yeah, best Porter, bag company in Japan. Yeah. And there's already the best bag there. Yeah. And I can ask them, can you make it? Mm -hmm. You know? That's, I think it's the same thing. Everyone, no one wants to go to make a shoes in China. Just ask the Nike to make your own <laughs> shoes, right? Yeah. Give <laughs> so us the phone number. It's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's already existing. Great shoes is here. Right. Can I make it? Can I change the color? That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Do That's you remember that first conversation with Porter? Were they like, why, why would we do that? <laughs> no, I was using Porters all the time. So they knew me. I'm uh -huh. using every day. So they yeah. are kind of happy to do it. Right. It was a kind of DJ bag I made, which uh -huh. is, it never exists. Uh -huh. you know, there's no, you know, they right. didn't really care about DJ. And, and then, like, fast forward to some of, like, your later collaborations now. Like, which ones over the, th the last three decades of collaborations, which one really stood out to you as, like, one of the most memorable ones that you love doing? I think maybe the Nike one. Because of the, the um, Nike one, Ni I mean Nike HTM. And oh, HTM. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was waiting for these young guys to say my name on the collaboration, but they didn't. <laughs> Maybe they want to hide, which they did. But <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Hiroshi was my first collaboration. <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. With the yeah. here's Aerosol. Can you say something? <laughs> yeah. So so. <laughs> No, but Hiroshi came really? to my showroom with Fraser, yeah. and uh, he, he looked at a suiting I made and said, you know, maybe we do something. So my, my first menswear I ever made was because of Hiroshi. So thank you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You have a, do you have a story? <laughs> so I have, yeah, so I worked with Hiroshi on a Burton jacket in... Maybe I gave him maybe. quite difficult... You know, the yes. best. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. So, but he made so, it perfect for you. So. Yeah, it was. Um, what is that? Two thousand? Two thousand one? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Two thousand. He so. wanted you to do a Burton jacket for him. Yeah. So we. He said. I mean, we were working for Burton at the yeah. time, and uh, so it wasn't really. Again, so we were contract designers for Burton. Yep. So it w I. I don't think it was really a, a collab in that sense. Mm -hmm. and, Hired they assassins. Told us, yeah, there's yeah, a no exactly. word. There's a no yeah. word collaborations. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then, um, and we had traveled to Japan all together, Greg and a bunch of the other guys, yeah. and met Hiroshi, and and he had an idea. He's like, oh, you should do a jacket that has you know secret panels that opens up and has other pockets. Like there was a character that you referenced actually, uh, oh, anime, an anime uh, character. Yeah, whose name escapes me at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but um, nobody had ever posed like a super difficult question to me like that. Like, so could you make a snowboard jacket? Like yeah, that? yeah. Uh, went home and thought about it, and, and it became the analog. I think it's called a Q jacket, which yeah occasionally pops up on tumblers and whatever. Like, cool, legendary. I mean, the <laughs> bottom yeah, introduced yeah, yeah. Yeah. him to me. He's a he has a best technique for the like high tech wear. Yeah, so, yeah. You know. And right. then, uh, so I, and then well, we when it came out, it actually had an electric cottage uh, yeah. right. label on, on the cuff. And um, yeah, this is way before, like, collab now is like a. So, yeah, like that would have been an ill collab, but like, now that yeah. was like whatever it was. It yeah, was like an it, was, organic it wasn't thing. really like thought of like that. You yeah. Know? And then just then really the, what you say, the organic kind of conversation. Yeah, started. yeah. exactly. Yeah. But and for those who don't know, you mentioned HTM, right? Yeah. So, uh, the H in HTM was Hiroshi, the T was Tinker Hatfield, and the M was Mark Parker, right? Wow. So it's like, <laughs> like, that almost couldn't even happen today, where it's just like, we're just gonna make a collaboration line and we're just gonna put like three initials on it and that's it, like of three different people. So is that the reason why it's so memorable to you? Because it almost can't be replicated like anymore today. Oh really? Can you do it? 
I don't know. I mean, I think I think companies now. Oh, I think it goes to the fact that back then collaboration was still so new yeah. that they're just like, yeah, let's put these three guys' names on it like that, you know, and, and make it a whole line. Like I feel right. like now there'd be, it'd be it would have a hundred employees in the first yeah. day. I mean, when I started to work for Nike, they were asking me to do just like changing color or things. You yeah, know? yeah. I, I'm releasing these shoes. Can you do a color? Yeah, that kind of thing. So and I wasn't really satisfied doing it. Because I want to change some performance or mm -hmm. some more designs onto it. Yeah. So that's why I came out to the HDM. Right. To yeah. do something more yeah. technical exactly. and advanced. Right. Mm -hmm. And how was it just working with Mark and Tinker on it these projects? It was fun, but three has different character. Uh huh. Mm. Like Tinker has a technical way. He doesn't really care about fashion at all. <laughs> you know, he want to do more like kind of athlete things. Yeah. But I came from the fashion industry. Right. And Mark Parker is a top guy who can say yes or no. Kind of <laughs> so. He cares yeah. about the, the money part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you, he's, he likes happen. product too a lot. Hmm? He like Mark likes product. Yeah. 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 Well, he was yeah. a designer originally, so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Got to give him respect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a footwear designer first. Yes. CEO yeah. second. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So now we've we've covered the sort of pre days of like how you got into collaborations. Now let's talk a little bit about like. Um, working with a company, right? It, it seems like the dream. You mentioned the Wizard of Oz, and I agree. Like when I first went to Beaverton, it was like the pearly gates of heaven opened up. I couldn't believe it. But then, just to educate the, the people out there, once you get behind those pearly gates, it's not all roses, right? Like there's pros and there's cons of working with a brand, you know, on, on any larger corporation. So. I wonder if you guys can recount any sort of like anecdotal stories of like times where there was like a little bit of like maybe struggle is too hard of a word, but like you know just like some some angst or something like where you were like, oh wow, this isn't as like easy or dope or like amazing as I thought it was going to be. Do you have any, or is it all gravy for you? I like working with Nike. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's, how about how about working with him? <laughs> no, no, now you know I'm like Hiroshi. So we could do this, or we could do this. Maybe let me think about it. Yeah. And now I now I have to like bring something really, really, really cool to Hiroshi for him to want to do something. So. Right, right. <laughs> it's uh, hard to get another collab with him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's all good with you. How about how about you, Elson? Um, I mean, I could talk about that for like that could be a whole separate talk. <laughs> <right>? Okay. <laughs> no, I mean the thing about doing a collaboration like that is that the closer in you get to another company, it's like. It's like a relationship. It's like you have a girlfriend or you, you get married. It's the same type of thing because you're like, you have your way or your company has its own rhythm and culture and way of doing things. Yeah. And the danger and the magic of a collaboration is that you're going to see exactly that from somebody else's point of view. So uh -huh. now it's not just the way you do it. Now it's the way they do it. Yeah. And somehow and and it, it almost never fits together. Right? No. So, yeah. um, that's the challenge, is right. to get that to happen. And it's those little things and, you know, timing or scheduling or yeah. just the approach. That's, right. that's actually what makes it really difficult. But also, that's what also the opportunity to learn is, because you get to see the inside of another company and yeah. how they handle these And they get to processes. see the inside of your company. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. there's a two way of the collaborations, like yeah. we did. We did from the scratch, basically. Yes. Mm -hmm. But yeah. if you work for Nike, it's existing shoes. Already is the Air Force One. Yeah. Yeah. What can you change? So it's a different point. And then yes. that is really risky too. You mess up with the beauty of the product sometimes. Yeah. You have to respect I, it. I, yeah, I feel sometimes feel, you know, oh, what I have I done? This is already beautiful, but <laughs> I made a mess, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I made a mess. Know? It's no, really yeah. true. Yeah. No, know, after like three months, you know, I think, oh, I should have done this, you know, that kind uh, of things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was my exact feeling with the Air Force One. That's like, I don't know. Oh, you made a mistake with your Air Force One? You no, I just didn't do, <laughs> I didn't do much to it. I just kept it so perfect. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? Because it, it already was. was. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Right. So, so we didn't have that problem. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you put it in a Vitamix blender. Yours was great. <laughs> when, we, when we did the Air Force One, we were like, all right, so since we don't, I mean, per, that was what I said at the time, guys. Like, I didn't personally have history with the Air Force One because right. I never really wore it. Uh -huh. I wore, like, I actually wore the Supreme down lows. Yeah. So that was my access point, I had, I had the supreme version of the shoe, uh -huh. <laughs> and um, I never had, I never worn the original, right? yeah. and I thought, we can't do it, because it's like, I don't have the, connect, yeah, and it's such an important shoe for the culture and for everybody, so I was like, 
But then I was like, you know what? Maybe that's actually an advantage because mm -hmm. we're not going to be afraid to like mess with it. Right, right. <laughs> so, but I remember when your Air Force did. One came yeah. out. When, I assume you're talking about one with the zipper down the, yeah, the, the side, right? the Lunar. That the is first like one. the yeah. most polarizing one because yeah. true AF1 heads are like, he fucking like blasphemized yeah, yeah. it, like, you know? Sacrilege. Yeah. <laughs> and... And I think that was. A, should, we, should we take a survey here? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did an interview with uh, I think it was High Snob actually, and they were like, and I talked about it, and they and they titled the interview, Errolson talks about creating the most hated shoe of all time. <laughs> <laughs> John, how about you? Uh, like, you're fresh off a project. Yeah. So what like, did you mistake? <laughs> yeah. What is your? What yeah. Did, what's your what, mistake? What did you wreck? <laughs> no, I mean, similar to these guys. I, what I really wanted to try to do was um, I wanted our Air Force One to sit on a shelf amongst, honestly, like amongst a, a bunch of uh, just inline Air Force Ones and have somebody have to take a second look. I mean, the project, the way it was presented to me was um, do an all-white Air Force One. So it was like, okay, well, how do I, A, honor this classic and, B, make it stand out? And... Um, so my idea was to try to create shadows, which mm -hmm. is really the only way that you could, in a, in a sense, infuse color into the shoe. So we pushed all the seams out and then indented the swoosh, just very subtle. And it, it's so funny, because like, I'll read comments online and kids will be like, there's no difference. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's kind of the point. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, it's already perfect. So it's just <laughs> trying to have you, uh, you know, take that second look and realize, you know, the construction and the subtle details, anything from the eyelets to the, you know, like all the seams, like every, the way the shoe was finished, that, that's where um, the real thought in the details kind of took place. Yeah, yeah so and I think an, another thing to add is like, you know, it, it really depends on the moment in time that the collaboration's coming out and yeah. how it relates to what you've done in the past or, or what, you know, you feel is missing. That's right. Like for, for instance, my Vans collaboration, you couldn't just buy those simple basic colorways. At that you time, know, At yeah. that time, yeah. you know, or, or have like the stitching and the sole construction. Right. And there was a lot of really small things, but it was just bringing it back to the things that they did in the yeah. original workshop. And then even with this, this Nike project, you know, my shoe was super technical and this crazy collaboration with Vibram Mm -hmm. And a new, you know, soul that attached to a soul is just like completely psyched out. Yeah. And then it just felt correct to balance it with something that was just simple and pure. Yeah. And so I think I'm always looking for that balance. Right. I think that's usually the answer. So, you know, sometimes things come out how they come out and people don't necessarily understand them at that time. Mm -hmm. But it makes sense to the designer because they're they're living that moment. Yeah, you know the, what I mean? The timing is everything because when you do a footwear project, you're usually doing it like 15 to 24 months in advance. So not only are you trying to get your message out, but you're trying to hit this moving target of like March 2020. Will this still be right, you know? So it's definitely a, a jigsaw puzzle you got to figure out. I mean, to that point, I would just add like, I think probably for everyone here, um, that's one of the most interesting aspects of any collaboration, not just with Swoosh, is that um, each company's timelines are different than your own. So for me, you know, being in Los Angeles and having factories in Los Angeles, we can literally come up with ideas and um, you know, see those ideas in three dimensions in like about a month and a half. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you work with companies and that's just not the case. So you have to adjust and kind of pivot in order to uh, you know, manage your expectations, and in some cases, be a little bit more detail-oriented because you're not going to have as many turns of product. Yeah, yeah. Some Art. of the, the it's very interesting too. Is like it gets even more exaggerated when you collaborate with um, other industries. So we've done a couple of things recently with, um, for example, the movie industry, and they're like, "Oh, can you make this character's outfit?" For whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, it's September. I got a little time, and like, you know, like, and they're like, "Yeah, we're shooting in October." Uh huh. And you're like. That's three weeks from now. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, yeah, you ready? Like, yeah, let's right. go. <laughs> oh, God. And, and then on the other end, and then uh, we've also worked a little bit on video games. Uh -huh. And video games are like, it's the same. It's like 36 months is, is like nothing to them. So yeah. it's like, you're like, I'll ask them, okay, when's it coming out? And they're like, maybe 2019, maybe 2020. Mm -hmm. 
We yeah. don't, it's too far. They can't predict it. It's so, they, right. it's so complex what they're doing. So yeah. when you try to match that to like, you know, apparel industry, which is a traditionally a very seasonal, you know, steady rhythm, mm -hmm. that for us, that's super, super difficult. Because yeah. it's, um, you're, you're, you're budgeting your team's time. You know you have pattern making capability for this amount of space. And then the rhythm of your company is we're going to make protos, then we're going to sample, then we're going to shoot. Right. Go to distribution, and, and when you get an interruption uh, with a different rhythm, a different cycle, it can really be Screwed hard to up, manage. Yeah. Yeah, so Definitely. Yeah, and to that point, for us at least, like one of the most important people in our company is the person who manages the calendar. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, yeah. Because for sure, like if your calendar gets um, kind of out of whack, like that's where you fall behind. You lose the season. Yeah, it's unacceptable. Yeah. So Nigel, when well, you finally got the call, like. You're gonna get a shoe. Was it automatically the Jordan One, or you like had a say in that? I mean, yeah. I'm like at that point in time, a couple years ago, like my mind was set on doing a Jordan One. Uh huh. It's a shoe that I've been rocking on my like riding in and like just living in in that shoe. Yeah. So um, when the opportunity came about, I was like, we have to do the Jordan One. And they immediately said yes. There was no pushback. Yeah, it was like, okay, cool, let's do it. Go ahead. <laughs> it was like, go ahead, you know, let's do it. And it was it was awesome, bro. Like that whole process of figuring out like what do you do on the shoe uh -huh. um after the, the initial idea of like we're definitely gonna do a distress jordan one just because when i ride my bike and my jays i kill them yeah so like, how do we recreate that yeah you and sold then, I, mean, I don't know if everyone saw this but you made an air jordan one that was pre-fucked up pre-fucked up for the and, <laughs> for the first time and each jordan one was separately that. fucked up yeah so each of them was hand distress like yeah. individually so that was super cool too where it was like no two people will get the same exact shoe. Yeah. And that was awesome, because everyone right. kind of has their own experience of the shoe and their own take on the shoe. I, but I can imagine from, another again, with the pro-con thing, like, I'm sure somewhere along the line, someone was like, that's not possible. I mean, yeah, I've, I've I heard murmurs that certain people were like, nah, <laughs> but we pushed it through, uh -huh. you know, and um, the, like, the, the crew that was working on, on the Jordan one, they all believed in it, and I believed in it, of course. Yeah. And it was, of course, you, you have those, those thoughts in your mind, well, is this going to work? Is it not going to work? Uh -huh. But once put it out and see what, what will happen, and yeah. it's a great response, you know? Yeah, and I think one other aspect of a collaboration that's super important nowadays, not only the product itself, but the release of it, right? So how it's dropped. Uh, I was in China. I saw about 30 different Aerosons, like, that they made in China, like, mannequins. But with your release, like, you did a world tour, I mean, that, the big part of my brand is travel. Uh -huh. I'm traveling around the world, riding my bicycle, creating content, shooting photos. And yeah. when I put this shoe, like, prior to putting the shoe out, it was important to me that I connect with the people around the world, like mm -hmm. face to face. Yeah. Or the people who are watching my videos and clicking the heart on the Instagram post. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, it's very important to me. Yeah. Um, and also, I feel like this shoe really told the story of my journey. Right. From the point I started riding my bicycle to now. So. Travel is a big part of that. Going around the world is a big Didn't part of that. Didn't you do multiple cities in one day? Yeah, we did New York and L.A. in one day. I think that's, a, that's, that's world history, I think. Like, <laughs> and, and you were at both locations. Yeah, I was at both. I was at both. Because you know what, too? Like, New York being home and then L.A. being, like, the second home. Somewhere that I've ridden my bike so many times. Yeah. Somewhere I've traveled to. Somewhere I have, I have roots in L.A. as well. You know, uh -huh. I've been going there for years. So I wanted to do, like, both cities. Coast yeah, to coast. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Hiroshi, I want to talk to you about a new collaboration that you just did which I don't think any of us have had a chance to mess with yet, but you did a convenience store. Yes. <laughs> so what was your it's idea? Huh? It's not really collaboration, but yeah. Okay, but you, a lot of products in there were like uh -huh. featuring collaboration. Yes. Why did you decide that like, I want to get into something else that was like totally a different platform, like a conveni? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I was looking for some new ideas and then Everyone does so many things. Yeah. And there was a maybe one thing no one really touched it. Right. And so you're a big Conveni fan. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I did. If anyone's ever been to a Japanese convenience store, they're like Yeah, the Japanese Conveni is different to your Conveni, I think. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> there's nothing wrong with our convenience, but <laughs> yours is a lot better. The ones the ones in Berlin I call the inconvenience store. <laughs> the oh, inconvenience store. <laughs> <laughs> After Japan it's just like <laughs> Really? <laughs> I know. All right, so yeah, I want to open it up to audience questions because I know uh, this is a rare, very, very rare opportunity um, to have all of these amazing uh, individuals on one stage. So 
Uh, we have mic runners. If you have a question, please stand up and we'll get a, a microphone to you and you could uh, ask away. Uh, there's a gentleman standing up right here. His question was, uh, what are your reservations about working with like a younger brand? Like, are you ever nervous about working with a young brand? Not really, I'm always looking for something new. It doesn't have to be young, can be old, or can be, like I just said, a Pokemon. So, you know, <laughs> just, just anything. I wanna keep a balance, which is, if I do those luxury brand, I wanna do something really underground also. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. Not too many people did Montclair and Pokemon in the same month. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, any other? I think that, yeah, right here. Okay, we're going to make you more nervous by putting a mic in your face now. <laughs> Go ahead. Like, this is my first time seeing Lots of Legends right, right here. But, like, I don't know if it accidentally or intentionally, but all of uh, all of you right here have some relationship with Nike. Uh, like pure, it's a pure coincidence. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. But like, so does it mean like Nike has something like sp really special, like it's art of collaboration that really attract you all? Like that's, that. a, good, that's a good question. Uh, who wants to take that? Is there, is there something special about them? Yeah. Nike has a history and archives. That's what I think. You know, when I, I start to work with Nike, they didn't really thinking about bringing, bringing back the, you know, all the shoes, like the standard shoes. Wow. So, you know, I told them, why don't you bring the dunk back again, that uh -huh. kind of thing. They wanted to ask me to do a new things, <laughs> but I want to do a, bring back the old vintage shoes. That's what happened now, I think. Yeah. That is such an OG statement. It's like it <laughs> blows my mind. Yeah. I think that's. I think that's. Right. I mean, they didn't even know what the dunk is. You know, yeah. I saw the dunk shoes. This is my favorite one, and then that's they cool. didn't even know. Like Nike Japan didn't know. Right. So, I think that's a hu that's interesting. A uh, separate thing, but um, the whole understanding that the the whole thing that we understand now as our industry or as as our culture is like how much of it comes from Japan. Like that vintage sneaker thing was happening in Japan like yeah. before anywhere, like decades. Like yes. and then <laughs> I, I remember being, you know, hanging out with the, the guys in, in, in Harajuku back in the day and seeing the first time like what we now think of as a collab and I can't remember who it was, but it was like the first time I saw it, you know, like it was like double taps thing with a on a with but a bape shirt with a double tap <laughs> logo on it. Uh -huh. you know? And I was like there's two logos on this. Like, yeah, what is? I yeah. know it was mind and, blowing back then. And right? it was like, you know, double label, right? Yeah, was, double label was the la was yeah. was the term that I yes, remember. Yes, double label. Know. And crossover Ro was the other Roshi, one. You, you yeah, I think there. that was the best so. things we done. Were like Harajuku culture made is yeah. like, you know, amazing. This is collaboration. Where you know we kind not really helping, but organically. Uh huh. Oh, let's do. Let's make this together. That kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah. I think it never really happened before. No, right. so. and that was the first time I was confronted with that. It was, it was really was like you were confronted. You were like you didn't, your brain didn't know how to like process it. Yeah, you're like, Wait definitely. A minute. It would be like you know Armani and Chanel being on the same item, right? It's just yeah. like what? Right. And uh, to see that ex like ex you know expand out into the world and become like you know a normal normal thing. Yeah. Is, uh, is an amazing thing. So actually, I want to ask. I want to ask a question based on that. Is there too much collaboration now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, please. <laughs> Does everyone pretty much agree or does someone want to disagree? Is there, is there not enough? There needs to be more. Yeah, there's, a, like, there's a lot of collaboration <laughs> happening right now. <laughs> yeah. It's like every day you see, you see something pop up. Yeah. And not, not, not saying it's a bad thing, but it's definitely like. A lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, just, there's a lot of product, period. <laughs> Honestly, I think yes. I think it's our job to um, create product that really means something because you create something in it. It's not like it goes away, like it yeah. exists forever. Yep. So it kind of should deserve to be in existence. Yeah. And I feel like uh, collaborations, they have to check that same box. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, right here, front row. Oh, 
Oh, cool. Cool question. All right. He asked a very specific question. Oh, I think Alex wants to take zero. <laughs> Alex, Alex, That's just me there. Alex wants to take one. Um, how much, uh, he asked, how much care and, and dedication and time do you put into the packaging of a, your product? A lot, actually. Uh, we've been developing our current packaging for like over a year now. Um, <laughs> just the packaging. Yeah, be, for like a <laughs> lot of reasons. But uh, one is we actually want it to be recyclable so that it can be, you know, torn apart and there's not mixed materials in it. And um, yeah, so it takes a lot of long time. Yeah. And then also just with uh, the branding, like creating um, brand rules that are more universal and easily applied because with collaborations, you know, you might need packaging for some products super quickly. And for us, it's been great to, to create a system that makes it so you don't have to think about what the rules should be for the packaging, if that makes sense. Yeah. So the decisions can just be made for you, so you'd have to just spend less brain power on it. But it has been a long time getting it to that point and, and um, developing all the, the, the proper things. And packaging, you have to order a lot of it. Yeah, I was which is really say, annoying sometimes. Ironically, the packaging is sometimes more complicated than the thing itself because yeah. just the way packages are made, like when you turn on the pack, the box making machine, like it just spits out like fifty thousand, like in a second, you know. So like for them to turn that off and then rejig it for your box, yeah, they're like you're a pain in my ass right now. I mean, my my thing, what I came, what my belief is about packaging now is similar to clothing. I feel like certain types of garments should be inexpensive mm -hmm. and certain garments should be very expensive for the quality. And it's the same for packaging. It should be like really throwaway and nothing and recyclable and barely be anything. Yeah. Or the packaging should be so nice that you want to keep it as That's an dope. object. That's dope. And I think those are just like the two. Yeah. Again, like I think like balance is always the, right. the correct answer to most everything, but just like a, a weird in the middle packaging that it just ends up just being more trash yeah you know that's a great philosophy all right any other questions i want to get one from the back it's all the way back that hand I, I don't know if it's male or female okay female yes double fisted thank you um so with uh, this could be for anybody um with collaborations do the brands come to you with an idea and they're like hey like you would be perfect for this or um or do you kind of like have Obviously, you guys all have unique styles. So, like, how does that look? Like, as far as do you have creative, like, a lot of creative freedom, or is it kind of restrictive? Like, do you wish you had more? Um, and like, where do you draw the inspiration from if they don't come to you specifically um, with an idea? Kind Who would like broad. to take that? Hiroshi. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't really hear. What did she she said in a nutshell. Do you have a lot of creative freedom when you do a collaboration, or right. do you listen to the brand a lot? I do have a freedom, but I don't like freedom so much. You don't like creative freedom Not so, so much. much. I like, I'm kind of good at working with kind of limited things, you know. Yeah. You, can, you, you cannot use this fabric, or you cannot use this style, uh -huh. and I do what I can do best in this kind of small circle. So actually, when they say you could do whatever you want, you yeah, don't it's, like I'm that. I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will totally second that because um, we get both types of offers. We'll get like, oh, we want you to do this very specific thing because we know you can do it, um, which is in a way it's easier because you got the parameters, you know, okay, this is the goal, let's go. Um, but we've also had other collaborations recently, like the one where I'm here for today with RoboRace. Um, that's more of like a, a trip we're going on because, you know, we've met the RoboRace guys and connected on sort of like a f you know friendship level because friends with some of the people in the, in, in the organization, but then also on like a, wow, what you're doing is really interesting. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is really interesting, not related at all. Yeah. And then over the course of like, you know, a year and a half, sort of conversations, meeting, you know, not really having a specific mission and things sort of gelled and continued to. Um, so now, you know, we've done two things together. Now there's probably going to be another one. But it was open from but the it's, beginning. It's just been sort of like a, like a discussion, you mm -hmm. know, and then every once in a while, a discussion would be like, "Oh, we could do that," you know. Are you available at that time? And can you? And then, yeah, there's a race, and then oh, now there's you know a VR sim rig, and right, um, and it's more difficult because there's no goalposts. Yeah, 
but it's also more rewarding because um, you get to do things that you're just not expecting. Right. Two different styles. Yeah. All right. Uh, where's the mic runner right now? Oh, so let's get that guy in the back since you're back there. Jealous. <laughs> <coughs> so, um, no guns yes. allowed. With I'm not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> so, Put those um, arms away, man. <laughs> what are you saying? No, what? <laughs> flexing. You're flexing. <laughs> Flex on them. <laughs> I'm about to sit down. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, in terms of collaboration, <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, the God is applauding your biceps. <laughs> So um, in terms of uh, collaborations, I know you guys talked about uh, there might be too many right now, but what goes into a repeat collaboration? Are you afraid of saturating a product, or is it based on who you're working with? You like how their process is, so you're more inclined to repeat a collaboration, because I know wow. maybe um, hype might reduce with too many repeat products. So what would make you, you know, yeah. repeat with somebody other than Nike? I think, uh, I mean, I think Errolson and Hiroshi, you two are probably like most known for this type of a question where like something great came out and then they were like, let's bring it back again in another color. And Hiroshi, obviously, you two as well. How does that work? Is that a conversation that you start or is it the brand usually comes and says, let's do it again? Uh, I think it's. You know, time to time, and yeah. maybe the brand says brand shows me the new stuff, uh -huh. like Nike. Yeah, Nike. I often to go to the visit uh, Nike canvas, and uh -huh. then they showed me the product for 2020 or 2021 yeah. for the Olympic game, that yeah. kind of things. And then you gonna do it, that kind of things. And then yeah. you say no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sometimes. Okay. But. So one of our long-term collaborations is uh, with Stone Island, an Italian company. And we just did, uh, this season now is the 10th year that we've been working together. So mm. 20 collections. Wow. And it's an unusual thing because yeah. it's, um, like I said, with, with Robo Race, it's a, it's a discussion. So it's almost like um, like you have two people and you, you know sometimes you, you're talking and you have, you know, everybody's got their friends that they can just always shoot the shit with. Yeah. And like, you know. And you learn about yourself in those conversations, right? And I feel like it's the same thing with a, mm. a good long-term collaborator. It's an ongoing sort of back and forth. So, and if that's authentically happening and you're both still learning, then there's yeah. really no danger of like, you know, making something stale. Right? When, with Stone so. Island, was it like when you first started, they were like, let's get into a decade long relationship? No, we, you know. So it was like year to year. Yeah, it's always been year to year and it's, it's still, even now, like now, now we'll be working, we'll be like, oh, we don't have a contract right now, do we? You're like, oh, shit, yeah, we better handle that. <laughs> right? like, but because it's so natural, because yeah, it's, yeah. it's actually an ongoing process, we have so much contact with each other. That's, and, the, best, um, that's the best kind, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the most authentic. I remember being interviewed by ID Magazine, where like, where do you see this collaboration or this, this project in five years? And I was like, wow, that's a long time. You mm -hmm. know, like, if we're here, it'll be because we deserve to be. Right? Yeah. That, and that's it. Because right. you... We all, you know, we all know when you're, you're creating something, you have it in your mind, you're not necessarily going to get there, right? And that's it when you're making something by yourself. But yeah. when you're working with somebody else, there's so many factors involved that could derail the process that, have, you know, that are just out of your control. Right. And um, so for something to continue for a long time, you know, part of it's just you know, being in the right place, right time. Good luck in that sense. Um, but it's really like about... You know, really, what the spirit of collaboration is about is, yeah. is doing something you couldn't do by yourself. You know? Yeah. And All right. I think we have time for one last question. We'll go with. Oh yeah, let's go on this side of the room, over here. The yes, you. Okay. So good question to to end it with. If you had to revisit one collaboration that you've done in the past, which one would you revisit? Let's. You have to. You get to go back and redo one collaboration that you've done in your whole history. I'll let Hiroshi go last because he has a lot to think about on that one. <laughs> He's like got to flip through like the whole thing. Matthew, you want to start first? <laughs> yeah, it is. What's what's the encore? Uh, what would I change or what would I do again? I either like you could just bring it back and. 
Basically, yeah. you have to do a confession. What, what have you done? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What you screw up? And what, you, what, what do you want a second swing at? Uh, <laughs> any any collaborative project? It's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You want to pass for now? Yeah, I'm okay. gonna pass. Aros Arosin? <laughs> I want an answer though. <laughs> I'm also gonna kind of. I I wouldn't want to revisit any of them actually, because I feel like when you've when you've done them, yeah, that's where you were at that time, and those it's like you know it's like yeah, you can't repeat it anyway. So yeah. I mean, you can revisit a like a specific product and uh -huh. bring back another version of something you've done, but to actually revisit the collaboration, I don't, yeah. is that even possible? I In your analogy, yeah. it's like going back to an ex. Yeah, it's exactly. like, there you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. John, how about you? you oh, God. Um, I like, I recently have heard actors say they don't like to watch movies from when they were like really young. Yeah. And I, I'm definitely not there by any means. Um, but similarly, like, it's just, it's where you were um, at a point in time. So what's, you know, it's, <laughs> you had control of it th over it then. So right. there's no point in really <laughs> looking back. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I, the, ch the box you want to check is that you still love it. Yeah. Nigel, do you want to do the AJ1 again? <laughs> <laughs> I want to do more. <laughs> more pairs for the homies. <laughs> no, nah, but um, I also agree where it's like, it was this, it was this, it was this time that like, you did this project and, yeah. and it was a reflection of where you were in life and everything. And you shouldn't go mess with that ever again. It's like, cool, it, it happened and you embrace it and you move forward. Yep. Um, I would probably like go back to some of my videos and want to add more clips to it, but <laughs> <laughs> like you know what, I could have did one more trick in this combo, th like things of that nature. But then like you go yeah. back and you, like you do that again and put it in the next one. So. Right, Hiroshi, did you think of one? Yeah, I think that's uh, going back to my conversations beginning. It's it's really dangerous to touch the holy grail like Air Force One or Jordan One or mm. Converse, and I think I did. This I can do at the time, the time. But one thing I tell you true, the converse when I did uh, yeah, the what was it, the Chuck Taylor? Yeah. With uh, I changed that to black. I think that was the first time I did with anyone else. The black, the yeah, black, black top to and black. Toe. Yeah, black yeah, rubber, that's right. Rubber yes. cap kind the of. rubber cap was black. Yeah. yeah, when it's always white. Yeah, and I see now the beauty of the Chuck Taylor was a white toe. Mm. Why, what have, have, have I done, kind of? <laughs> 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 That's one thing I really, that, but that is kind of my taste. You know, everyone has a different taste, so don't get me wrong. Yeah. Maybe the black toe is beautiful too, but I should have done it for myself. Yeah. Good. All right. That's a great way to end it. Big round of applause to the crew here.